I was a bit nervous coming over here. But you know what? When I pulled up in the hallway and I heard what was going on, but before I even get to that, you know, hereditary is something else. Okay. And I can be conceived as a weakness, but it's something I can't help. My mother's gave me something. And you know what that something is? She could be sitting down and looking at anything. And if it's moving, tears come to her eyes. And after seeing that video up there, let me put it this way. Um, I, I have a deep respect of Mimi. She uh, kind of got me out of my shell to come here today. And um, I just want to say because of that, just to reveal a couple of things. I have a topic that I have, and I'm glad that for what you did in the hallway, it's going to bring it out. But um, I came to this country from Jamaica in 1969. That was actually the year that my grandfather uh, was named the first national hero of Jamaica. And I can go even a little further back. I was born in uh, England. I was born in Hackney, London um, in 1959. I left there when I was two and a half years old. Went by way of the original Queen Mary, um, the ship, the original. <laughs> and I arrived in Jamaica. It seems like I'm arriving places at big times. Why? Because I arrived in Jamaica in 1962. If anybody's familiar with that day, they know that 1962 was the year that Jamaica got its independence. Okay? And I, then I came to the United States in 1969. A lot of things happened in the United States in 1969. The, um, somebody did something that was out of worldly. That's Neil Armstrong, who walked on the moon. Okay? And like I said, my grandfather um, was a national hero at that time. And you know, the thing about it is, is that, and there's some other people that might not be from this country, and I know you're in here, is that I can understand my grandfather when he came here. You know why? Because I don't know slavery. When I came up here, I didn't know what, anything about slavery. Because, and I'm not cursing, but I'm just trying to be emphatic. Because in Jamaica, we own the damn country. You know what I'm trying to say? And if I told you in the last year, and I'm, I, 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 want to, I want to say that my grandfather's movement was inclusive of everybody. He's just talking about equal rights for everybody. It's just that in this country, those with the least rights, other than the Indians, is uh, black people. And that's just a fact, okay? And um, you know, he, he, uh, what he did was just amazing. But coming to the United States, at, at 9 turning 10 and watching TV and I'm being honest in what I say I did not know I was black meaning a minority until I came to the United States Tear, like I said my mother passed it on to me tears came down to my eyes and I said oh no I'm black as it's being a negative thing because like I said if you in the last year how many people have called me cocky. Why do they call me cocky? I have a part-time job at the airport. I work um, um, with Allegiant Airlines at the airport. And of course, the majority of the people that come to the airlines are white. So therefore, we know that we are all created equal. Now I want you to know, when they talk the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, we were not included. Because we were slaves at that time. Is that a true statement? Yes. So when they say all, all men are created equal for those 13 states with all inalienable rights, they were not talking about black people. <laughs> when we got the chance to, to be considered for voting, we were like, what, three-fifths of a person. So you can understand the history that we've had in this country. And the thing about it is, the whole slavery thing was not even a British thing. Because none of the laws in Britain backed up the slavery that we were subject to in this country. That was homegrown. As a matter of fact, you know when we came here in 1619, we weren't even slaves. We were like the Irish. We were like indentured servants. 
we weren't slaves. It was like about 40 years after that that we started getting into you know, the monetary part of the South, making money you know, to have cheap labor. Am I telling the truth? Yes. So we didn't start out as slaves. We just ended up that way. It was all like economics. So when the Constitution was made, yeah, they had slaves in the South. But the North said, you know what? Let's make a deal with them because they're going to grant us some concessions. So we're just not going to worry about that. Let's just go along with our Constitution. Is that a true statement? Yes. So I've been in this country since 1969. This is 2016. And I'm still seeing the same stuff. When is it gonna stop? Well, the thing about it is, is that when you're in somebody's home, you go by their rules, don't you? Now, what is the chance that it's in their house? When do you think you'll get to the point where you'll, where you'll be on equal terms with them? So when my grandfather came here and went through 38 states, knelt with leaders first, Came to, came to New York, went to 38 states, and saw what was going on. He is basically saying, why are you here? Don't you know there's a continent that you came from that's rich in resources and everything else? You're only about 10, 11 million of you, because the population there was about 100 to 105 million. And we're still around 11, 12%, because right now we're at 12.1% of the population, which was puts us um, is what, about 324 million people in the United States? That puts us about, what, 39 million. Back then, we were 10 to 11 million. So we say, why put up with this? Could you imagine if we listened and had gone to Africa and what would have happened? But I'm going to talk to some of that. But I'm going to digress a little bit because I had a quote right here. i got to put the glasses on. they read the glasses. You know? I have a quote here to address the video that I saw, and I'm feeling better now. I'm sorry, I finally calmed down about that video. It's disturbing. It says, but suppose God is black. What if we go to heaven and we, all our lives, have treated the Negro as an inferior, and God is there, and we look up, and he's not white? What then is our response? Do you know who did you know who that code came from? Anybody want to give me a guess? There was a gentleman by the name of Robert F. Kennedy. This had actually had to deal with apartheid because it seems like uh, whites thought that the Bible tell them that it's okay to make Negro slaves. That's what they're supposed to be, and that's when he came back with this code. That was in 1966, and we know what happened in 1968. He was assassinated. You know, and that family has uh, really endured tragedy. And I just wanted to say, you know, um, my, to my, my, my topic was going to be, and like I said, is, um, you know, the UNIA had a motto. Anybody know what that motto was? One God, one aim, one destiny. But if I was to rewrite that, I would probably say, we have many houses, but one homeland. We have many houses, but one homeland. My example I can give you. <laughs> I was born in England. My parents were from Jamaica. I grew up in Jamaica. And I came to the United States. Do I have a lot of homes? Yes. But where's my homeland? Africa is my homeland. Okay? You know, my, um, my grandfather said, you know, and um, this is actually based in a redemption song by Bob Marley. And how am I doing with time? Okay. It says, we are, we, we, we are going to emancipate ourselves from mental slavery because while others might free the body, none of us can free the mind. And I hope when we have conversation, we can talk about that. You know, I mean, I, you know, one of the things on the job I will say, another day, when it, when it seems like it's the bleakest and I'm having the hardest time and it's just rough, you know what I'll say? Another day in paradise. I say that all the time. And people are looking, what are you talking about paradise? I said, well, you gotta understand, wherever I am, that's where paradise is. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? And they look at me strange. But do you know how much your mind has to do with your body? In uh, other countries, we could go into God your independence. You know, uh, uh, you know, directly from the teachings of Marcus Garvey. Okay, now what do we? He's responsible for over 30 countries in Africa. 30 countries. But you know what? When we talk about minorities, we are not a minority. Guess what? The continent of Africa. Um, and I didn't realize there's a site that has up to date. 10 o'clock this morning. Over 1.2 billion people in Africa, guess what? We're now with China and we're now with India. You put all three of us together, we're talking about 53% of the world's population. Guess what? 2100, Nigeria is scheduled to be what? 1 billion people. Guess what? Every country in Africa is what? Increasing at a rate of at least 2.4 to 2.5% a year. Do you know what that means? We're doubling every 40 years. So guess what? In 2050, Africa is going to be around what? 2.5 billion. We're eventually going to be 40% of the world, just Africa. And those, we're not just, you look at Nigeria, what? Is that 188 million people in Nigeria? Okay, am I right? And we're talking about Ethiopia, it's been around forever. Pretty much, we're going. We're talking about BC when we talk about Ethiopia, right? That's about what 90, like 90, 95 million. Okay, we got the, the Congo somewhere about 70, 80 million. You see what I'm talking about? We're not a minority. So we not we need to do. We need to walk. We need to talk. We need to act because you know what? We first we're first nation people. Why? Because if you believe in Christianity, you believe in the Bible. Where did it start? In Africa, and people do know that Egypt is in Africa, right? I just wanted to make sure, okay. I just, I just wanted to make sure. All right, am I making a point right here? So when people say I'm cocky, well, you know, I have another reason to be cocky, because when I go to Jamaica, and I'm going to the store to buy stuff, my grandfather's on the money. <laughs> coming back, coming, what, coming to America? Something like that, right? You know what I mean? And, and I want to tell you something. I am not a prideful person, but what I am, everybody is family. I've been to Switzerland, I've been to, I've been to Israel, I had Palestinians show me the Holy Land. I, I went to Switzerland, I started talking to people, next thing I'm out there at home. What I'm saying, we are all related, 7.4 billion people, we're all related. We just need to act like it. You know what I'm saying? We just need to act like it. Alright? And wherever I go, that's the way I, I am going not to see strangers. I'm just going to see family I haven't met yet. But what I will tell you this, you know, you have family and you have immediate family. And I'm sorry to say that my immediate family are the people that share my pigmentation. It doesn't mean I don't love the other family, but I know the struggles that my immediate family goes through. And I mean, I, you know, I, that's basically what I wanted to cover because I know I'm probably pressed on time. Thank you very much. I appreciate you allowing me the chance to come and speak with you. And it's just such a comfortable environment. Thank you so much.